good morning, my brethren. Good morning again. And thank you for joining us. Edition. Um, I'm here with Joe Questo, a uh, servant in the faith, and um, who runs the TV that um, continue to serve us in the way they have. We meet every uh, Sabbath at the, in Auburn, uh, Massachusetts, and we look forward. We start at 12 o'clock, and we look forward to where we can talk. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something else. I'm, gonna, I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to be a little bit different than that. I believe that apart from being about doctrine, the Bible, and my topic today, you can't. You. But how can we do that? We can win if we believe that we can have to have and possess inside of us so that we can achieve what we so desire. If there's no belief in and take root, certainly the the, the big people, the millionaire and billionaires, that you that is higher than themselves. Because if you believe in yourself, you become and what you're really doing is asking yourself for things they want so that you can receive it. To believe that they're to shun the very thing that you want. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says. And we don't possible to please God because he is this and that he is a reward of those who seek him. You cannot have a strong God of the universe, the God of the old tech. It has to be something great and desires of your heart. You cannot be the God of yourself. It is the creator who creates is the God of your life that you have to believe in so that you can the power of win do you believe it do you made were made with him let me read that again through him all things that can you see what everything that we look on belongs to the one who created so how can you one who do you want to win do you you can obtain what you want God. Matthew 7 verse, Matthew 7. To give good gifts to your children. How much more we have ask God for what he has. We cannot go and take who, has, who owns the thing. You want to, to, and God who owns the material world. You are taking it, you are saying that you want to believe in him. And believe that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So that that power can give you what you need. Matthew 5 verse 4. The enemy should not be blessed. You know what? When the rain fall or the sun is not going to bless you and not bless me. Believe in for something. He will give it to him. It's not just, it, not, it does not matter to God who you are. Johnny, you know what? God does not show favoritism because favoritism is a sin. And you are convicted by the law as a lawbreaker. God, if you do, if you try, if you ask, asking for something, so that you're asking for. You have to alter the way you think. You have to believe. And you cannot believe in yourself. You have to. John's, my father will give you whatever you ask for. You just have to believe that he will do it. You just have to have that. Not approach God without faith and believe in him. Because he is who diligently seeks him. And not because he will not bless the person that he does not show favoritism. He, God is not a lawbreaker. A good Christian so to say who are now gonna get everything and your and your neighbor your, which is your enemy not gonna get it. He will have and he will he will have health, he will have success, his children will also have been that is much greater than we come to God. 
they they want something but the way they ask for it you're one that this person really wants because in their asking they are in knowing that they will receive we have to believe by faith that whatever because you have so little i tell you truly i tell you mountain move over there move nothing is impossible for you there are many ways that if you use faith these obstacles that is in your life you can possible to god nothing at all it takes belief and a faith in god and a faith not only in god and i believe only in god but also i believe in your inner self you have to visualize what you want from the depths of your subconscious self to see that in reality one of the books that i i read is uh with les brown live your dream by les brown it's a book that i i my friend introduced it to me because I wanted to be a public speaker. I must tell you, I wanted, I, I desired to, to be a, to become a public speaker. I wanted it so badly. I wanted it so badly. But every time I've, I've, I was given the opportunity to speak, my hands would be shaking. You could see all the podium shaking. I was nervous. I was sweating for no reason. I have everything written down perfectly, but I somehow find a way to jumble it up and make no sense to those who are sitting before me. I read the book, Live Your Dream by Les Brown. And suddenly I have an awakening of how I must do things. Because you don't first live your dreams in the reality of the world, in, 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 in the open public. You read the dream. Your dream first is a place. You live your dream first in your mind. What I started to do after reading the book, I started to notice other people because I was saying that I was nervous. And how can I get this? And I watch other people of how they speak. And I noticed something about persons who speak. They would, some of them would come around the podium and they'd grab it and they would be scratching the, the, the podium, rubbing their hands. I have my secret. I'm not going to tell you. You have to find yours by yourself. Everybody who does public speaking was nervous at that time. I remember just anticipating my name being called. My heart would race almost into an heart attack. I, I couldn't see. It was so, I don't, it was so unbearable. Just listen to say Solomon will do the opening prayer. Solomon will do the, the sermon and Solomon will do the sermon. It, it, it was so was so tough for me but I want to do it I made many mistakes I made many mistakes but I wanted to live my dream and I could not live my dream in the real world if I did not live my dream first in my mind I have to live my dream in the subconsciousness of my mind so that that can be so that my dream can be a reflection into the real world Sometimes many of us want to live first in the real world and not live in the subconscious world of our mind, seeing ourselves achieving the goals that we want and making those goals live in the present world. Many persons come to me today and said, Oh, Solomon, you're a good speaker. You should know me like a couple of years ago. Joe, I couldn't stand here, hold this mic. I was shaking every you could probably sit there and hear my knees rocking. It was I I tell it was hard. But the more I did it, the more I became comfortable because I started thinking about it in my mind. I saw my knees shaking. I hear the words that jumble up. And then I practice in my mind. I'll tell you one thing. This thing that people talk about going in front of the mirror and talking, it worked for some people, but not for every pe everybody. It didn't work for me. I did that. I went in front of the mirror and I gave it my presentation. When I go in front of the public, it was a totally different thing. 
because I have never lived my reality in my mind first. In order to achieve what you want, you first have to see yourself achieving it in your mind, in the subconscious thought of who you are. And then when you live that dream perfectly in the reality of your mind, it becomes an outward reflection of what you are. Now today, I'd be called up out of the blues. I remember one time I went to Och um, not Och Reyes, Och Reyes in Jamaica. Yes, indeed in Och Reyes. I turned up there just to be with them for that Sabbath. And they said, oh, Solomon, you're here. You're giving a sermonette. I... I was I said I said to myself now what I was gonna talk about and suddenly it came to me and when it came to me I went up there and I delivered a, a such a dynamic speech applaud everybody was clapping and they enjoyed it when it when it was finished everybody surrounded me but that did not happen right there that happened long ago in my mind and the many mistakes that I made to accomplish it see sometimes sometimes because we have failed once we don't like to feel the feeling of failure and therefore we never go on to achieve what we really want les brown says in his book live your dreams that the graveyard is the most richest place on the earth he says it is their books that should have been written is not written stories that should have been told is not told cars that should have been built is not built Cake that should have been baked is not baked. Recipe that should have should have been should have gone out to the public has not gone out. And he's certainly right. Because in the graveyard contains more, more idea than in the world. But because we lack that confidence in ourselves, we, we fail once and we give up. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You see what I'm telling you? That your belief structure has to be solid. And that is where you first have to work on. You have to work on your believing in yourself. Your belief in God. And your faith that you have put in yourself and in God. In order that you can achieve what you want. First, live the reality in your mind. So that you can live the reality in the real world. What you are in the real world is a reflection of what you are in your subconscious thoughts. I'm going to tell you another story. Because some person will say, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Many people believe that they cannot do it. It's in, it is physically impossible. I'm going to tell you about my friend, Bruce. Back home in Jamaica, I had a, 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 a Mazda, one to one Mazda. It was like a, it's shaped like a Volvo, those buggy Volvo cars. And I used to, when we have Bible study, I wanted, I drop home many a person. Bruce was one of the person I drop home. Guess what it, with Bruce? Bruce is a blind man. In my car, I had like four or five persons, including myself. One night, one of my other friends named Taniga said, Bruce, you don't know anything. You can't even see. You're blind. Bruce said, you can talk. So, Bruce, so Taniga said to Bruce, how tall am I, Tani? How tall am I, Bruce? Bruce said, you are 5 feet 11 inches. She laughed. And we all cracked a laugh because by she laughing, we know that she was actually that height. So she asked Bruce, how you know that that is my height? Bruce is a blind man. Bruce said, by listening to you talking, I can judge where your judge your height by your voice. So we're saying, oh Bruce, we're kind of doubting ourselves if Bruce can really see. So Tanika said um, to Bruce, what is my complexion? And Bruce tell Tanika what her complexion is. We couldn't believe it. It was, it was so accurate from a blind man. This blind man could see and not have sight. It's how you think can tell you if you can do something or not. If you say you cannot, you will not win. 
If you want to win, you have to believe that you can win. And if you want to win, you have to believe by faith that it is, in, it is, it is possible that you can win. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Bruce is physically blind. But he can tell us. He can show, tell us, demonstrate. That he, know, that he, can, he, he can look, he can hear, he can smell. And he can tell us what we people who have sight can see and he without sight can see, tell us that he that that it is bruce even went on to enter into a competition that we have in in jamaica the herbert armstrong memorial trophy is a competition where five persons test were tested to prove the doctrines of the church bruce a blind man entered the competition he came in third among persons who can see so two persons who can see he, they came in behind him a blind man by the power of belief you can achieve by the power of belief you can get what you want you just have to see it you just have to see it you just have to play out that con you, have, you just have to play out everything in your subconscious mind to make it become a reality you can win if you want to everything is up to you do you want to win do you want to win everything starts within the mind that's why there's a so much that's why there's a battle for the mind is who control the mind? Will doubt control the mind? Will perfect faith control your mind? Will perfect belief control your mind? Whatever you allow to control your mind will become the reality that you will live. Close your eyes. Think about what you want. Think about what you need. You need to be, you need to be self-confident. See it happening. Let it happen. You need to get a, you need to go to college. See yourself walking through that college door. I remember my time when I wanted I have I had, I, I was doing carpentry and it came a time that I didn't want to do carpentry anymore. And I decided that I was going to go into computer. I had no I know nothing about computer. I know about construction, board, joints and nails and, and all these things saw and hammer that's what I know about and here am I now going to do computer I remember the day that I went to that school and I stepped and I stepped up and I looked in my class and I said these guys know more than I do but none of them will leave this school and I don't have what they will get I saw that in my mind, not knowing anything about computer. And at the end of the class, I got a higher grade than some of them who knew computer. I saw myself winning in my mind. And, I, and seeing that I bring that life into the real world. You are first defeated in your mind. And you are first, you are you fir, you are first defeated in your mind. So that is why it's so important to guard your mind of what enters it. I said, close your eyes. You want to be happen. See it happening. You need that special someone to come in your life. Live that moment with the person that you want. Sometimes when we don't know what we want, the universe don't know what to give us. God don't know what to grant to us because we don't really know what we want. We are double-minded in all we think. Whatever you want, you have to have, you have, to have a resolute, you have to be resolute in your decision in wanting it. You need a loving family and friends. See it happening. You need a new car. Start driving it. You want to buy a new house. See yourself closing the deal. 
Your dreams are the reality that you should be moving into in the real world. So it's not that you dream and you do nothing. You dream and you act out your dream. Philippians 4 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you can't, you only will achieve that if you believe, if you have faith. And you bring your subconscious reality into the real world. I remember when I used to work at this company. It was a school. We taught, I taught carpentry for a while. And uh, it, it's, we call it industrial arts. And at the, in some given time, the company closed down. I was without a job. I was living in my father's house. I had no job, no money, no girl Joe. I was unhappy. I was depressed, I was stressed out. I was emotionally burdened and burnt out. I was, I was at rock bottom. I was driving around the whole day trying to find a job so that I can have some have something, some mean, some sense of purpose. I was driving my friend's car, and in the car, I, I slammed my hand on the steering wheel. And I said, I need something, I need something. And let me tell you this, with that strong emotion and belief that God will provide, at the end of the week, I receive a call. I receive a call and said that you can come in and teach some nurses two days a week computer classes. It was, it was a start. See, sometimes we have to count the small blessings that we get because a bigger blessing is coming. We have to count the small blessing to get to the bigger blessing because sometimes it's how we treat the small blessing with, in contempt that we don't get the bigger blessing that, we, that, is, a com that is coming to us. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move mountain. A mustard seed is a very small seed. But when it grows, it grows into a humongous, a giant tree. God is asking us to have that strong belief and faith in ourselves. That is what is God is calling to us. To have, calling us to, to believe, calling us to have faith, calling us to envision what we want and ask him for it. Because he's not going to give some people gifts and don't give it to others. But when we ask God for these things, we cannot have a double thinking about what we want. We have to believe by faith that God will give us the gifts that we want. But we have to be hungry. We have to be hungry to want that. We have to be hungry. We cannot have a double-minded thought of what we need. So in other words, you are saying, I need a new car. But you are saying that there is so much obstacle in the way for me to get it. No. If you need it, desire it. If you want it, go after it. The scripture says in James 1 verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you are unstable in your subconscious thought, you are unstable in what you want. It's like a son asking a father for something and when he, he's, he, he does not know what he wants, how to express to the father what he wants. All his father can do is just look at him because his father don't know what gift to give him. We have to know the gift that we want so that when we come to the Father, we, are, we have a strong faith and emotion that is attached to what we want so that when we ask God or the universe or whoever you believe in will grant it to us. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, tossed back and forth 
like the wind, like the, well, like the waves. We have to be, you have to be, I have to be, all of us have to be. If we want what we want, we cannot have a double-minded thought. You can win if you want to. It's all up to you. It's your decision. It's your life. I can't win for you or no one can win for you. Only you can win for yourself. I had that same conversation with my son this morning. I said, son, if everybody else fails, you should not fail yourself. You can win if you want to. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, whosoever desire, whosoever desire, when you pray, believe that believe that what you have believe that you have received it believe that you have received it and you shall have them jesus said this he will never leave you or forsake you he will never leave you closeless empty and hungry and, and all these other rest of things and you don't have to give the pastor you know, you think about it. Why you think these pastors ask you to donate money to their, to their cause? Because they know that you don't have any faith. And the only faith you would put exercise is the faith of sowing seed. So the one place, they, they just tell us sow a seed. You will believe that you have sown a seed. So that you can be blessed. But if you think that you are blessed by the power of your belief and in God you will be blessed and you don't have to give away what you have to people to get blessing because it's not them who you sow a seed to they're blessed by what you give them but it's God is who is blessing you so if you go directly to God instead of a middleman your blessing would come far quicker but sometimes we love God through middlemen in order to get what we want go first to God so that he can give you a blessing the Bible said he you can come in front of him in his throne of grace we don't have to have priests no we boldly come before God and ask him with a conviction this is what I want when I want to become a speaker I said this is what I want and I was straightforward in my not thinking left or right or the mistakes that I would have made or the mis mispronunciation of words which I still do. But the one thing I realized that even, prime, even seven, seasoned speaker mispronounce word as well and double talk as I do. But that does not stop them and if that did not stop them it will not stop me. I want something. I went for it. I attached my emotions to it. I attached my faith in God to it. I attached the belief that this will happen. And I was never double-minded in it. That's why I can stand here before you today. John 14, 18 says, I will not leave you as often. I will come to you whenever you want. And whenever you want something, God will come to you. God will open the storehouse for you. But you have to go to him. And you have to go to him in faith. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You have to believe. And what he will give the unrighteous, he will give also those who are righteous. But it will be our belief in God that will do it. It is our straight mind, it is our straight mind thinking will give us what we need. Our straight thoughts, our straight thinking, our straight, our, 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 our mind. There's a song that says, my mind's made up and I won't turn back. I want to see my Jesus someday, yes. Your mind has to be made up and you have to want what you want in order to get it. You can't turn back at the signs of the first failure. 
You can't turn back when the road is rocky. You cannot turn back when things are not going the way you want or people are not saying the things that you want to be say, heard. They're not saying the things you want to hear. You have to step forward in the power of faith and belief that no matter what they say is what you want, is what you want. You can win if you want to. The power is in your hands. The power is in their hands. But one of the things is that many of us do not want to work to get what we want. We want to sit down and let it come to us. My fridge is filled with food. Food is on the stove. But if I do not get up, I will, I will die where I sit of hunger. You have to do physical work in order to feed yourself. If you are going, to, if you have to do physical work to feed work to feed yourself, why don't you think you have to do physical work to achieve the things that you want to? There's work that is involved in getting to where you want to be. There's work that is involved in achieving your goals and your aspirations. You can win if you want to. James 2.26 says, For as a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. You cannot achieve what you want without some amount of works, without some amount of sacrifice. You want to go to college, you have to sacrifice your friends who want to go to movie and party and skating rings. You have to sacrifice them. You want to control your weight. You have to sacrifice. I don't want to say it, but I have to I have to sacrifice my cheesecake if I want to have good health. You have to make sacrifice for what you want. If you don't want to make sacrifice sacrifice of what you want then you should be contented where you are and don't grumble about it because it is your state of reality that you love if you want to me if you want to buy a car there's a sacrifice that you have to make in getting it many of the persons that we see that are rich today they were they did not start it out a billionaire some of them started out very poor and had nothing and have to struggle. But they believe in what they want to achieve and they sacrifice the, th the desires and pleasures for the time until they achieve what they want. And when they achieve what they want, the pleasure that they deny themselves are far more than what they would have gotten. And sometimes we settle for less than we when than we settle for less when we could have more. We settle for the self-gratification, living in the moment. And the moment is just a moment. That's all it is, just a moment. When you can have all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are the winner of your life. At the end of the day, you will recline in your lazy chair and you will look down in the sunset. And you can say, is it that you are going to say to yourself, look at the many mistakes that I've made. Or are you going to say, look at the amount of things that I have achieved. Look at the amount of life that I've shaped. I remember in my course of, of, of teaching, my years of teaching, this guy, he came, he, he was a he was a womanizer, gallus as we say in Jamaica. Gallus is a man who have girls in bungle. So he have one tonight, one tomorrow, and one the next week. There's a DJ that's in, in Jamaica. Enough gal land gal in a bungle. Gal from Rima, gal from jungle. He have gal all over the place. Gal mean girl. I think we know that. 
So this is how this guy came to me as a real gallus. He would sit down and he'd tell me some of his exploits. I remember one time he was telling me about how this, this woman who liked him off and then the husband went out to work and then he came into the house and he, he, both of them were doing, doing, the, the, doing the thing. Then the husband came up driving the garage and then he had to hide in the closet and he said, he said, Solomon, my heart was beating, I was shaking. But if he opened the door, I would give him a fist and run out. But luckily, the, kid, <laughs> the guy came to the closet and looked and didn't say anything. And then he left back for work. She, the, my friend even, he even told me that his underwear was, was, was outside at the, at the bed foot. And the girl came and just stuck it under the, the bed. So sneaking, <laughs> sneaking. But he tell me of his exploit and when I said, I said, man, you have to sacrifice all of that if you want to learn from me. He sacrificed all of that. He came eight o'clock in the morning and he did not leave sometime until seven o'clock in the night. Why? He wanted to learn. And he, lear and he went on to own his own business. The power of making sacrifice. Nothing can be nicer than sex. But he sacrificed that because he wanted something else. We have to work and make sacrifice for what we want. The only person who don't, don't want to do anything is the person who is where they are. You can win if you want to. <clears throat> Faith without works is dead. We cannot need a job, or a car, or a nice house, or a nice family, or good friends. You cannot do that without work. It's something that you have to work towards. It's something that you have to sacrifice some things to get. Jesus and the Father show us a great example. Jesus' desire is to save us. And Jesus sacrificed himself so that he can save us. He gave up his life so that he can give us life. He showed us his work, not just his talk. Many people that talk, 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 talk about what they want, but do nothing to get in it. And when somebody else achieves it, they, they complain. If, just, if they just got up and worked towards what they want, they would have achieved it. They would have gotten it. But you see, the thing is that the creator will not reward a lazy person. If you believe in the universe, the universe will not reward a lazy person. I know that. I've seen it from experience and from many of the motivational speakers that I've read. Zig Ziglar, Steve Covey, in the habit of highly successful people. And this and the and the seven highly success of, of teens, I gave that to my son. He's, he's he's eleven. He's reading it. Take him some time. I allow him to read it. And the first habit, the first rule is habit. It says that habit can make you or destroy you in any way. Habit will do something to you. If you have good habits, you will get reward from it. If you have bad habit, you will get a reward from it. In either way, habit will win. It will win. So if you want to achieve, if you want to win, if you want to win, you have to do some work. If you want to win, you have to get, you want to write a book. You cannot just think about it in your subconscious thought only. You have to work towards it. You have to gather the material and the resources. You have to spend it, sacrifice the time when you spend with your friends and spend some time writing that book. You want to be a, a you want to own a restaurant. You have to sacrifice some of the desires that you have. You want to go to the you want to go to New Zealand, you want to go to Hawaii, you want to tour the world. You cannot want that and want to own a business. 
it cannot work. You have to sacrifice. Because the thing about if you sacrifice what you sacrifice today, what you sacrifice today is nothing compared to what you will achieve later when you have put in your work. Dream big, think big, and you will get what you want. Burn your dreams in the subconscious thought of your mind and leave them in the present reality. Because your dreams, which are inward, cannot be seen by people outside of us. Joel cannot see the dream that I have if I don't physically show him. I can say it to him, and he can say, well, that's some nice words, Solomon. But I have to demonstrate that dream by my actions and allow Joe to, realize, to, see the, to see the success of my dreams. I have to put my dreams into the real world so other persons can see it and benefit from it. Gerald Ford, when he invented, well, he didn't invent, and he, he, he figured a way to make car fast and easier. He saw it in his mind. And he told some business persons about it. They saw it as well, but they didn't believe him. He had to bring it into the real world. Make what makes what he sees in his mind became a reality. And certain today, we have a lot of Ford vehicles driving on the road. The six-cylinder engine, he saw it in his mind, but his end, not the six, eight-cylinder. Is that six or eight? He saw it first in his mind, and his engineer did not see it. When his engineer failed, he said to them, that's one more way you find out that it's not, it's not going to work. Start, continue to work at it. <coughs> James 2, 20 and 23. But you know, O oh vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abram our father justified by works? Your work will justify you. How does your work justify you? But what you, what you worked for becomes reality. You wanted a new car. You wanted a new porch. You put in what you need. Do what you need to do to get the new porch. Your friends see the porch. Or your long bogini or whatever it is. They now see your dreams become a reality. You want a new house. You have a dream. Your friends need to see that dream becomes a reality. You cannot just dream in your mind. Your dream has to expose itself unto the real world. Our works, our works are justified when it is seen by others. When he had offered sacrifice, when he had offered sacrifice his son upon the altar, we have to sacrifice. We have to make sacrifice if we want to achieve what we want. What you offer up to live, what do you, what do you offer up to live your dream? What do you offer up to live your dream? If you have good habits, you will have the success that you need. If you have bad habits, you're going to have the success that you, that you desire. To make a sacrifice to live the life you need, live the life you need, you must make sacrifices. See how his faith with his work and by works was faith made perfect. By our dreams, our aspirations and our desires, our work will be made perfect. Whatever we want to become and achieve will be made perfect by the sacrifice that we put in. You're not going to get anything by just asking for it. You also have to work for it. Many people think that because we are Christians, we need to do, we need to be poor. I do not believe that. I do not believe because we are Christian we have to be poor. Abraham was not poor. Isaac was not poor. Jacob was not poor. And Solomon's well count up to 666. You find that in the book of Kings. 
These patriarchs of the Bible were not poor. Even Abraham says that he wants to take nothing from the king of Sodom because he does not want the king of Sodom to say that he made Abraham rich. Abraham wanted, God, Abraham wanted to say, God made me rich. The God of the universe made me rich. But we have to work towards it. It's like sometimes when I look on some children and I look on their parents, and I say to myself, what did this parent expect of their child if they live a life of worthlessness? If they live a life without faith. How can they expect their children to live a life better than that? We have to break the cycle so that our children, children can benefit from our work. Your children are a reflection of who you are. They are a reflection of who you are. Good works produce good children. Bad works produce bad children. My son and his friend complained to me um, about school that they have children in school cursing the F word. And I said, you will always hear that. But it's how you deal with it at the end of the day will matter. You don't hear me doing it. You don't hear me doing it. You don't hear your mother doing it. Therefore, follow the good examples. And if you work towards a good example, you will be a light in your class. A person, your teacher will gravitate more to you. Because certainly when I was teaching, you had one guy, he was one of the biggest troublemakers in the class. He had potential, but he was just a troublemaker. He gave me more problem than anybody else. And you have some other guys, they were not troublemakers, but they, they, were, they, they wanted to learn. As much as he had great potential, I spent less time with him and spent more time with the others because of his manners and how respectful he was. I show favoritism and partiality, but don't believe that if we disrespect God, he will look out for us. If we show double-mindedness and unfaithfulness, he will look out for us. No, he's not going to. Look at the example with Israel. When they went off, he went, he left them. Genesis 14, verse 23 says, Abram. Oh, it's the same text. Abram accept nothing from the king of Sodom. And Abram was a rich man. Matthew 26, Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you this is for us as christians to say that first seek god's kingdom and all the material blessings you will get but you have to believe in it because rain fall on the just and the unjust so therefore we have to believe in ourselves, in god in the universe whatever you want to believe in, in order to win you have to have a strong conviction a strong faith in order to achieve the things that you desire a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways will you continue to be a double-minded man we have to work to achieve our goal we have to work to accomplish what we dream of
The Church of God International of Worcester, Massachusetts meets the second and fourth Saturday of each month. Services are held at the Comfort Inn Hotel, located at 426 South Bridge Street, Auburn, Massachusetts.